All right, welcome to the aftermarket session on Monday the 22nd. And uh, Netflix just rolled across the tape, so uh, we'll analyze their numbers. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to do a lot of these as for the next couple of weeks when there's a big number of names that are reporting because I want to get to the numbers first to kind of go through it. But first quarter net streaming sales, 8.33 versus 6.33. What about their overall numbers? They looks like they beat on the revenue side, 3.29 versus 3.28. And the tech space, Adobe sees 2018 adjusted EPS, 620. Uh, who else? Did somebody else just come gap effective tax rate, approximately 11%. To your ADB I'm hearing eight. Adobe. Did Adobe come out with something? Adobe Adobe's out with pre numbers. Uh, so look at this. Uh, let's see what they were expecting, and then I'll bring up the charts. But yeah, Bloomberg Squawk just said Adobe's out as well with their pre numbers. Um, let's see. Yeah, first quarter, first quarter EPS already out. So it looks like they've done this now a couple quarters. It feels like Adobe. They come out Adobe and they give Q1 guidance. EPS at dollar forty-three. Uh, let's see what that that those two names are doing. Real nice breakout, by the way. We'll go over. Uh, we'll go over Yum. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Net Netflix is up nice. So glad I did not fade that Netflix. Uh, I did not go long it either. And it looks like it's up to 242. Jeez, what a move. And um, yeah, look at Adobe, guys. Adobe's also uh, has come out. I'm looking for the way. Yeah, there it is. Uh, 6.2 versus five, five and a half. So there you go for Adobe. That's a that's a surprise. And uh, let me just flash this on. Jeez. Oh, Netflix trading higher now by 7% after hours. So there goes Adobe up, up very nice. Um, they are up to 202 and Netflix is up. So Netflix is up to 245, guys. Did anybody end up playing Netflix? Uh, very nice if you did. I could Maybe not. Uh, session, I nice. mentioned that they would need to have a blowout quarter. Higher by 143 points. And it looks like they did. A well, um, couple other names that are out two. that are reporting. RMD. And let me switch the screen so that you can um, you can see everything come out. Netflix sees uh, 2018 technology and development investment about 1.3 billion. Yeah, RMD is another one that's up. Let's and see, Netflix sees 2018 technology and development investment about $1.3 billion. Uh, had 39 million non-cash charge. Yeah, Adobe crushed it again. I just, I cannot believe that they're, that they're out with uh, numbers ahead of their call again. And I believe they've done this now what, two times, twice they've done this, up to 203. Uh, let's see who else is out. I, and I, I don't think there's that many more. I think most of the reports are out for tomorrow. Unbelievable. So I did not do any trade. I'm glad I did not fade it because um, obviously I thought the risk was to the downside for Netflix. Um, so just no trade for me. But man, it is through to 247. That is unbelievable. So I want to go over a little bit of today's today's trades. It's just I, I just cannot believe that they're that these are moving this this much higher. But it is what it is. So uh, pretty crazy action today. We finished up. The spy finished up 80 basis points. Q finished up, uh, the Q's finished up one point, almost 1.1 percent on the day. I, I thought this the, in the Q's, it looked like they wanted to go a lot higher um, earlier when they were kind of flagging uh, about midday or mid mid session uh, when we did our midday session. Uh, of course, this is not going to work on me. 
there we go. Yeah, I thought right in here, but I, I wasn't expecting this last leg higher, but I thought this set up for a really nice play for the end of the day. And, um, I, you know, it seems that right now that there is just a massive grab for to get in this market. It's fear of missing out, which is going on right now. So if you're in it and, um, you know, I think we've just been doing a, an awesome job. I mean, I put on three or four new trades in the first half hour. I was very busy in the first half hour, you know, I which is usually what I do on the weekend is kind of figure out where I want to position myself. Uh, and I said, okay, I really like a couple things here. And, um, I went, I went in the beginning of the day and then I, I really didn't do much thereafter, but, you know, granted those, those plays that I put on in the beginning of the day, uh, seem to have really worked out pretty well. Uh, I put on, um, IBM, which is a starter trade, but, um, uh, what did I put on this morning? I, I added to JD. Yeah. I thought I did three or four things. Um, I don't know why the. Uh, I think it's in the other channel. That's why. So I put on the OIH trade and the SMH trade. Um, this should be in both channels. I like to keep these in both channels. But um, I think when OIH, when I put this trade on, it was it was up less than a percent. So um, it is now up or went up 3%, I think, on the day. But this is pretty remarkable stuff all around. So I wanted to talk a little bit, you know, as as we go on, through the week, um, we're going to have a lot more earnings to play. I didn't play one name for earnings um, because I think there's a lot more attractive ones that are going to be out later in the week. Let's just check what. Geez, look at Adobe. 210. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, 210 for Adobe. And Netflix is up to 248, up 20 bucks. Congratulations if you played either one of them. So looking at what we've got for the week, and I want to talk about some of the option flow that we're that we're seeing. And the best way to the best way to summarize the flow that we're getting and, and kind of process it as, as it's coming in. It's certainly chunky flow that is coming in. So here's today's trades. Uh, for the most part. Facebook was a great trade off the open. Uh, we're seeing a lot of FCX be bought ahead of earnings. Uh, Microsoft is on, should be on here twice. Um, they started buying Microsoft earlier. So here's a good example. You know, Microsoft is up huge today. Look at the size trade that they put up in Microsoft. Now they report the last day of the month. So April 57 and a half calls. Uh, let's just look to see where that is. I wonder if that's they're going to get a boost on on what um, what Adobe's doing. Yeah, they're up a little bit uh, afterwards, so they're up up 1.7, you know, close to two percent on the day. So the way that you have to think about this is you don't know what they're doing. You don't know they're going out to April. I would think that they're bullish for their earnings, uh, which is at the end of the month. But they're pre it looks like they're pre positioning here ahead of the ahead of their um, their earnings announcement so the way that you if you want to get involved in this what I would say is that with earnings coming up and again there's about four or five names that saw similar type big action you know what I would say is you could go out a couple months we don't, you don't always have to pick you know because for example Celgene is another one where they just went after Celgene like two or three times aggressively, a couple of really big trades, but they're going they're going right around earnings date, right? They report earnings this week. They did February 9th. They did the Februarys. They did the they did a bunch of them. So there's a couple of ways that you could play it. First of all, I think with earnings it's a complete unknown event, and I tend to trade less around earnings because I think it can be uh, if it goes against you. You know, not every name is going to blow it out to the upside. And certainly we've seen that in some names that have run up a bit, such as Alcoa, uh, ran up a lot and then disappointed. Uh, there, and there's a couple other names that did that too. But um, there will be opportunities of where names have not uh, blown out to the upside before earnings. And in those names, I think you just have to realize that the, the earnings event is an unknown event. So you could participate, but maybe do it at a lesser size. 
And then also maybe go out a little bit further. If they're buying February 9th, that's going to be a very binary trade. Uh, and that's kind of how I associate earnings is that it's, it could either work really well or it could work very badly for you. So you could do you could go out a little bit further and you could also uh, go into a call spread as well. Um, that will limit your risk, that it will limit the amount of premium that you're spending. It will also minimize the, the, the jump up in implied volatility, which a lot of names get right before earnings. And then right after earnings, what will happen is the, the implied volatility gets, gets bled out of the option. So if something was trading at a 30 implied volatility, going into earnings afterwards, it may go all the way down to like a 20 or an 18. What does that mean for your option prices? It's going to fall, your option prices are going to be, are going to go down just because the uncertainty of the event is, is taken out of the equation. So call spreads may be a better way to play if you're going to hold through earnings. The other thing is you could just own it up until the earnings event is another way that you could do it. But again, you're, you're, you're really messing with a short-term move. Um, you're basically betting for Microsoft or for Celgene that they're going to continue doing what they're doing. And I think a lot of the time, you know, they're going to, you know, so I think positioning going into earnings is, is not a bad trade. And then if it happens to continue to go farther, you know, you can, you know, that then you're sitting pretty, then you're in a really good spot. You could take off half, you could take off three quarters of the trade. Uh, and then maybe, you know, on the last piece of it, then you could say, hey, I'm going to hold the rest through earnings for, for to try to get a big winner. But I think what you want to be thinking about is whether or not some of these names are going to keep going. And then by the time you get to the actual earnings date, if you're looking to put on an earnings trade, you may be trapped out of the trade uh, because it's will, the name will have run too much. So that's what I really wanted to, to, um, to you know, that's the point of, of kind of talking about this. And when you see an order like this in Microsoft, it may make sense to put on a pre-earnings trade. And then if it happens to rally further, you can take it off. I just don't know how much of an opportunity we're going to get for a pullback. As always, you know, unless, unless something, but right now it just seems like, um, the markets are in fuego and going back to what we said on Friday, it kind of seemed like the market wanted to go up and catch up with the rest of the world. Um, if you look at where global equities are versus us equities, they are, uh, lagging. Um, so, and part of that is the noise of this of this possible government shutdown kind of kept us in check towards the end of the week. Otherwise, I think we would have rallied really hard uh, on Friday. It was just my opinion. So I, I think this was due um, based on what everybody else is doing, uh, meaning the Hang Seng, meaning Japan. But um, yeah, nice sharp move by Facebook. So we'll go. Any any questions so far? Does, does that make sense uh, in regards to how to look at earnings? Um, certainly, you know, for me, it, it will be risking less too. You know, I was talking about short-term trades with someone offline. And I was saying that I normally will take much smaller size trades the shorter duration um, they're that much riskier, but, um, you know, you could participate just, uh, maybe, you know, what I'm thinking about doing is, is not as large as size that I normally trade. And, um, you know, I've been advocating that on this whole last leg higher in equities without, a, you know, without seeing a pullback at all. So that's, that's the game plan. I think, um, you know, definitely looking at some names, the SMH trade, is looking, you know, I'm looking for a move into earnings and after earnings for the semis. That's why I put that trade on earlier. And there will be opportunities where some names uh, tank a bit after earnings, and then they're and then they will come back. There'll be great opportunities to, um, you know, to to buy that dip if a name just happens to come out with earnings that are so so. All right, so we saw some post earnings flow in IBM. Uh, HBI, we saw some call buying in. Uh, the XLE and the OIH were great trades uh, if you picked up on them earlier. I actually put that OIH trade on uh, before the call buying came in. So, um, like I mentioned, up 3.1%. Um, that was just taking clues off of what Halliburton 
and what Schlumberger A were doing. I mean, look at Halliburton. Halliburton is up 6% today. 6.4% VPOC taken out. Uh, Schlumberger A was up 4.4%. So again, paying attention to what names are really reporting good earnings that have pulled back. I mean, look at this. I mean, this wasn't even a big pullback. But um, that's why I decided to take that trade even before we saw that um, that go up. Uh, AMTD, so maybe that's why they bought those E-Trade calls uh, right before the uh, the close. Uh, 1.26 versus 1.2. Full year adjusted, 255 versus 305. Yeah, uh, maybe that uh, could be the reason why they bought the E-Trade calls. Let's see what this is doing here. Yeah, jeez. Another name. Another name moving up. Yeah, so here was the E-Trade order. You know, so here's a perfect example, right? We could walk through this one. Nice, sizable trade. Again, going out to April. So it looks like they're, you know, putting a decent ship down. Uh, the puts may have been sold. Tough to tell. The February 53 puts. Sweep opening, but going up mid-market. So here's a good example, right? So they report the 25th. What is that, Thursday? Uh I did not know. I did not think about the E-Trade earnings, but uh, excuse me, the TD Ameritrade earnings. But um, you know, here's an example. This is a very chunky play. April 50 calls. Uh, it's a $270,000 option premium trade. So you could put on these April calls. You could make this either. And again, you, you know, as I always say, you don't have to put on. I mean, this is way in the money calls. You could do something like. You know, let's see, you know, if you want to go out to April. There's there's several things. There's several you have several plays here that you could think about. So let's say we want to stick with April rather than even February or March. So you could do something like the 55 calls. And maybe get into those around 290. Uh, and you could either go the, the 55, the 55, 60 call spread right off the bat, or you could buy you you know you could buy the the or tomorrow I guess tomorrow because the market's closed, but you could buy the 50, the April 55 calls just outright. And then right before they put, put uh, right before they report earnings, depending on what they do into their earnings call, you could either, if the stock moves up, you could possibly take take them off for profits, or you can you can make it into a call spread. And at that point, you could either sell the sixty or the sixty five calls. So there's different things to kind of think about uh, with that. And again, you don't have to put on a a huge sizable position. Maybe just something to to say, hey, somebody's taking a shot at calls. I'll take a small shot too. Any questions so far? But these are all things that you can kind of think about when, when we see the, the, the calls. So, you know, I wouldn't get completely deterred that they're reporting earnings in a couple days. Just watch your risk and watch your position size. And, you know, you have to believe, I think, if you're going to take a position like that, that, that uh, it's going to run into earnings. In this way, in the perfect world, you could take a good portion of the stock off before they report earnings and, and maybe leave uh, a small position on, a, you know, a smaller position or uh, make, turn it into a call spread. All right, so that's my strategy for, for earnings and for a couple of the names that we're really seeing big call buying in. Um, Celgene is a little bit different. Celgene kind of reminds me of when, when Gilead bought 
what kite uh, pharma they uh, Gilead didn't do much pre-market and then it took off uh, as the street liked it so Celgene reports in a couple days they're buying calls in them uh, it's probably at this point um, my thought on Celgene I mean it is below way below the 200 day moving average I think most of the bad news is probably out of this stock so something to consider for for an earnings play when um, when they report which is uh, before the open on the 25th so was that Thursday morning looks like All right. And that works well. You know, that's another thing that, you know, if you don't want to get into that type of trade, you know, you could kind of just make a note of, hey, they bought calls a couple of days before earnings. We, we noticed that with PPG. You know, I was actually pretty lucky to get out of PPG, but they bought calls about a week before they reported earnings. That kind of compelled me to take a shot for earnings. And uh, that, that worked pretty well. I was able to get out of that trade for a double. Uh, IBM was the other name that I was thinking of, by the way, that sold off, that run up, that ran up into earnings and then sold off. Wow, uh, Adobe came all the way back in, hit 210, 210. All right, so we might as well talk about the, the rest of the, the option activity today because it was pretty pretty darn good. Uh, Yum Brands. Uh, I think I was giving a webinar when Yum hit. Otherwise, I would have taken this trade. Uh, February 82nd, 82nd and a half strike calls. Um, they report on February 8th. So this one, you have a little bit more time in Yum. Um, geez, what a run up. And, you know, I had this because I think we looked at this this name on Friday. You know, now breaking out of um, sideways consolidation. So I had this drawn from last week, and uh, and there you go. Also MACD crossover. Congratulations! I think a couple of you played this name. So really, really nice trading. Um, a few other names I caught my eye. We went over Celgene, went over Microsoft. Uh, a couple energy plays and a couple uh, biotech names. Um, the Delta was pretty cool to see this after I'm already in a trade. You know, Delta, Delta just up a little bit, but way off the lows. It's still consolidating, still in consolidation mode. They also bought AAL. So who reports earnings this week? Who, wh why do you think they might be buying Delta and uh, American Airlines this week? Anybody reporting this week that could could be a catalyst? Yep, UAL. Who else? So it's good to try to connect the dots a little bit. You know, big week again. They're just buying weekly calls, so it's like, huh? What what goes on? What happens? This, <laughs> what's going on this week? There's another one. There's another one that reports this week. See if I can find this here. Uh, uh, let's see if I could put in XAL, which is the airline ETF. I don't know if this, yeah, here it is. Uh, maybe it won't show up. So another name that reports, sorry, somebody's playing music next to me, is Southwest Airlines. Uh, Southwest, Southwest Airlines reports on the 25th. So, you know, kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it's a cheaper way to get involved. And if they just talk really nicely about the whole industry, you know, you would think the whole group goes up. And uh, United is tomorrow. I believe they're tomorrow after the close. So that's that. That's my take on the, the call buying in both uh, American and Delta for the for this week. Both both weekly calls being bought. Again, they're not always right, but they're taking a swing. 
So just because they buy the calls aggress aggressively doesn't 100% guarantee that they're going to be right. But it's probably a, you know, a smart little play. They're probably not, um, not risking that much. Yeah, maybe a little bit more than you know, 19,000. So maybe it is a pretty big swing, probably over a million dollars. All right, a couple other names that uh, rep that um, that had uh, aggressive earnings flow. Look at this RYAM. This is not a bad looking chart. Ryanair Advanced Materials. Uh, it does have resistance right around twenty dollars that it has to get above that red line. Was not able to do it today. Let's see what this is. They are uh, Advanced Materials Operates Performance Fibers Business. Basic another another chemical company basically. All right, and just a couple other names to go through. MRNS saw two-way flows, so I'm not going to talk about that one too much. There's a little bit of Cyprus calls that went up. Uh, WPZ and BPL, uh, I believe two MLP names, also seeing call buying. Um, and then IBM. So I don't, I've don't. i tried to figure out what the catalyst was for March 2nd. I was not able to figure it out. Oh, cool. Uh, thank you. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of March second calls. Some going up on the bid, some going up on the on the ask. Uh, some weekly stuff going up as well in IBM. But uh, I mean, here's one order that went up above the ask and swept for March second, 373. Um, I did start a position in, in IBM. So again, you have to think about these earnings names if they have a bad report. Three day rule, give it a little bit of time. Looks like it did finish um, in the green today, but off the highs. All right, so I think let's uh, let's go ahead and finish it there. Uh, HBI saw a big call buyer. We talked about that name is now above the 200-day moving average. Any other um, any questions before we we end the session? We're just about 27 minutes, which I like to keep the the sessions and the videos under a half hour. The BM BMRN saw a nice call buyer um, today as well. Um, notice again, just 461 contracts, but um, July 95 calls, that's a $280,000 trade. So certainly a lot of risk taking uh, that we're seeing on some names that are yet to report earnings and, and some names that have a little bit to report. All right, guys, um, I don't see any questions. So we'll... Uh, We'll finish up here. Let's just check check to see where these names. I'm surprised Adobe came all the way back in. Let's see where it's at. Yeah, it's actually back up to 202 now. I, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody misread something or there was something else that came out about that pre-number. And let's see what Netflix is doing. Netflix still around the highs. Uh, so, again, congratulations to anybody who played Netflix to the upside. Very nice. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know what's negative about um, Adobe to kind of bring it back in. Uh, I think that was a nice buy, uh, Bob. That uh, boosting 2018 EPS forecast on tax reform. All right, I'll have this video out uh, shortly, guys. Thanks very much. Um, for checking in after hours and uh, we'll set it up again for tomorrow. Thanks everybody.